scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Listen, when I pray this prayer, you will know who to not relate with and who to relate with because there is Jonah and there is Jesus. Beware of who is on your boat. Don't carry Jonah in, the, in a pit to look for Jesus. Listen carefully. You need the seeing eyes. Businessmen, listen to me. Without the seeing eyes, everything looks like white from a distance. It's until it comes close. You say, ah, no, this is black. The seeing eyes. Satan always comes as an angel of light. There are some of you, the financial troubles you got into in your life is because of blindness. You thought it was this and found out it was not the power to prosper corrects your vision so that you are able to see why am i taking out time to tell you this so that when we start praying you don't just fall and stand for nothing you know what you are receiving the financial testimonies that will arise from tonight's miracle service will bring glory to the name of the lord can i tell you this hear me i'm saying this prophetically you will hear testimonies of nobodies. People who as they are standing here, they are still surprised by themselves. Say, what has brought me to this realm? Products of prophecy. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. The power to prosper. Man of God, listen to me. If you have the power to heal, and the power to do all of these things if there is no power to prosper on your ministry you are going to compromise it's only a matter of time i assure you no matter how much a man of integrity you are the bills of ministry will squeeze you to a point where you will get into things that are not godly there are many people who started well but financial pressure pushed them remember i've taught you the scripture every time there is hunger Israel will go to Egypt to look for food. When Satan wants to take you to Egypt, he uses hunger. Because when there is hunger, you will leave the place of covenant and promise to a place of compromise in search for food. Many people have sold their hands today. You see all these are young people who are doing money rituals all around. Some of those boys were born from Christian families. Don't downplay the hunger of people to feel like their life is making meaning. Nobody will sit down and keep growing older and their lives at least financially is not making meaning. They will join groups. They will join all kinds of things. Ah, somebody needs to arise. Oh. Somebody needs to arise. You, you need to be angry. You need to be angry. You need to be angry. Angry at your current level. In one minute, just pray in the spirit. I will see continue, but just pray in one minute in the spirit.
In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Remember, Sir Isaac Newton taught us that anybody will remain in a state of rest or uniform motion. It will remain there for as long as it is kept there except compelled by an external force to act otherwise that means your destiny will remain where it is until a force from heaven comes to push it listen i came tonight as a prophetic midwife to tell you where you have stand is enough it's enough it's time for you to move for god's sake it is enough in the name of jesus christ from these ashes it's time for you to fly like the eagle that you are Micah 2 10 give it to us please ah. Micah chapter 2 and verse 10 this is a prophetic word for someone it just came to my spirit now read it from the depth of your heart are you ready one to read arise ye and depart for this is not your rest because it is polluted it shall destroy you even with a sword destruction, if you remain at that level, it will destroy you. Arise, it is not your rest. This is not your place. You are an eagle. Stop dwelling around with chickens. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray this scripture in one minute. Lord, I arise. I arise. It's time to arise. This is not my rest. I arise. I depart from this level. I arise in the name of Jesus spiritually I arise financially I arise as touching the greatness that you have placed upon my spirit I arise someone pray this is not my rest this is not my rest I refuse to settle for less man of God pray thank God for what God has done so find your ministry but this is not your rest evangelist pray this is not your rest prophet pray politician pray this is not your rest professional pray this is not your rest please pray this is a miracle service you are praying yourself to a new level. This is not my rest. In business, this is not my rest. As touching the call of God, what I saw in my vision is yet to happen physically. I will give him no rest because this is not my rest financially this is not your rest listen listen look up everybody what does it take to live where you are to the next level on the part of God power on your part anger and hunger two things anger and hunger are required ingredients to break through your current season if you are not angry enough you will remain there giving excuses and if you are not hungry enough you cannot be filled man of god you will remain at that level of the anointing praying for 100 people and having only one person getting healed 
it won't work that way the nations won't place a demand upon you that way that is the honest truth professional uh -uh. not at that level someone is going to pray father i am tired of this level i am both angry at this level thank you for this level but lord i know that i am overdue when a baby stays more than nine months in his mother's womb he calls for concern when a baby stays in his mother's womb if it is before nine months that's fine the baby has to be patient but above nine months doctors will tell us there is a problem lift your voice and pray Bring a performance, oh God, at another level. Bring a performance in ministry. Bring a performance in family. Bring a performance in my finances. Bring a performance in my destiny. Empowerment from heaven. The grace that turns dreams to their reality. Outside are you praying? Inside are you praying? Shata branda gata katosko toprash Ela kata branda zagatish kalika poska sinekata Manda praka toshko dobla zikete breskiya Power of the Holy Ghost coming upon your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen. When God answers your prayer, how does He answer it? By giving you power. God answers prayer by sending power the power that turns that desire to its reality now listen i'm going to pray on your prayer request but before i start ministry you are going to pray on it by yourself and declare that lord in this season this and that and that make your request known as you pray please do not keep quiet And don't say God cannot do it all. Don't entertain unbelief. You don't have to lift it up. Even if it's written somewhere, you just begin to pray. Mention everything by name. Father, it is within your power to make great. It is within your power to prosper. It is within your power to lift. Someone pray. hallelujah please hear me listen carefully please in the name of jesus can i tell you i know definite times in my life where certain levels of empowerment came and i knew the change when we started this work you see and i say this with every sense of responsibility and humility as at the time this work started this thing called the power to get wealth was not there. There were ideas. I was reading materials and learning because I knew that doing ministry with integrity will need resources. And I didn't want to go around inconveniencing people every day. God's people will give, but church can't be about money every time. 
and then you can't be demanding money from people and not release the grace that empowers them do you know let me tell you when the anointing of god rests upon people who truly love you and they are blessed you don't even have to ask them for anything they will be too grateful to live they will never allow you to beg for tea and bread not within there are people who have the hearts to give listen something is about to fall here right now that's why i want you to listen i remember praying and studying i had learned principles and a day came i had to study the life of abraham david and study these people i said i found a missing link i was already anointed though but just because you have the anointing is not like a general purpose tool uh -uh. the anointing is assignment specific the anointing for prosperity will not bring healing no their allocations are different you can have a first aid box with many drugs they are all called drugs you cannot carry the drug for high blood pressure and swallow it for headache you are causing trouble the design they are all drugs you go to a doctor a professional and he will diagnose you oh you have malaria he will give you the drugs for malaria even if you have malaria and another sickness most times doctors will choose which one to treat first when you are fine they will change the drug and treat the other thing many of you have received many impartations you can know the one that is missing this night don't keep quiet but as far as god spoke to me oh this issue of the power to prosper i've done teachings on prosperity many of you have given but i want you to be angry know that god is able to help men you are ebenezer ah. you are ebenezer this i know about the helper of men you are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer Listen You are Ebenezer The lifter of men You are Ebenezer God can help men stop struggling alone You are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer I remember praying and crying to God and say Lord this work is enormous the apostolic and the prophetic ministry requires a lot let this grace for God's sake, come upon my life and also come upon this vision. The power to prosper can be on you as a man of God and not be on your ministry. You will prosper while the ministry suffers. The power to prosper can be on the ministry and not on you. The ministry will prosper and leave you to suffer and you will start compromising. Can I tell you this? When that grace came, with all due respect and honor to Jesus, I knew it has come to stay. The Bible says, listen, it says on the day of Pentecost, all of a sudden they saw what looked like cloven tongues and it came and rested or sat. It didn't visit and go back. There are graces that can sit and rest on you. When it stays on you, that is it. I submit to you with all humility every devil and every principality from hell knows that this is a ministry God has helped the ministry is not the building the ministry is you and you must answer that name this night in the name of Jesus Christ it does not matter what spirit of poverty has tied down people in your family you saw people educated to phd but they could not build a single house that is a wicked spirit when your level of intellectual investment does not match your financial rewards something is wrong with that equation and then number two we are going to pray that god will move us do you know let me tell you this 
any sincere man of God who loves his people, your greatest joy is not your personal testimony. If someone buys me a car today or buys me a plane or builds me a house, thank God for all of that, but that is not really the testimony I'll come and share here. My greatest joy today is to sit down and hear people saying, I came from a family with nothing, serving idols, and now I am on fire for Jesus, loving Jesus, and see what God has done. That's right. Now, that's a testimony. You must be a wicked leader to rejoice over your results as above and against the people God has sent you to. The real joy of a leader is not his personal testimony. But to know that God's people are growing in leaps and bounds, can I tell you, man of God, this may be a secret for you to learn. When there are genuine testimonies, not stage managed, not exaggerated, genuine workings of God's power in your ministry, it is impossible for that ministry to be empty. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land a higher place than i have found lord plants my feet on higher ground the last prayer and then it will be a very quick one in this place tonight father i vow that as you cause me to be great it will not distract my work with you rather it will give me an opportunity to serve your purposes lift up your voice and pray that sincere prayer someone is praying pray and let my god surprise you tonight pray and let the one who backs us up surprise you tonight lord that my greatness will not be an interruption to my spiritual life it will not be an interruption to my love and my fire for you that is usually the condition if the nations will see him through your greatness if the nations will know him through your greatness then there is no limits to what he can do if that greatness will not bring pride arrogance Hallelujah. I wish I had the liberty to share some of my testimonies. But sometimes we live in a world where people misunderstand everything men of God say. Once you say A, people will say you said A to Z. And it, it turns out to not even edify people again. But I will tell you one or two. Listen carefully. I remember a time when a real estate company came and met me and they said, sir, God gave us an instruction that everywhere on earth we build an estate that will build a house for you. It's our covenant with God. Anywhere on earth across the globe, for as long as this company exists, just know that anywhere you see us building an estate, I don't know how many estates they have built now across the world. If, if you tell me the power to prosper does not work, think again. Hallelujah. I remember a company of wealthy people who came and met me and said, Apostle, God said we should make you a non-executive board member of this company. What for? What do you people do? This and that and that and that. This is the instruction God gave. So what will be my contribution to your company? That spiritual advantage. You represent the ark of God to our business. I'm sorry, yo. I'm sorry. You see, this is why sometimes some, it's good to say certain things to just help you know that the man standing before you here is not talking nonsense. Let me tell you, if you think this is just a preacher's talk motivating you, think again. I submit to you with all humility what it takes to run 
Koinon, one koinonia service is what many people may use for conferences. Believe me when I tell you. What it takes to run one koinonia service. You've never seen anybody come here to cry, to manipulate, to say this and that. You see, when God sends a word to Jacob, he lights upon Israel. We are not the inventors of these things. We also received it from the carriers. He said, go to them that sell and buy. Hallelujah. Our world today only wants people to brag. Once you are bragging and making noise, doing a lot of things, aha. Uh -huh. But once you are modest and humble and you live your life with modesty, sometimes we say these things not to attract conflict. That every devil in hell knows that till Jesus comes, this ministry will not know poverty. Just believe me when I tell you. No, 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 no. It's not a prayer point. I'm telling you what has happened. It will only be from glory to glory. It's not pride. Please, I'm sorry if it looks like I'm arrogant. I'm only describing for you what must start happening in your life from this night. Apostle, I'm coming from a background where nobody knows me. Apostle, right now, as I'm standing here, I'm in debt of one billion, five hundred million. Fine rest. You are not the first to get into debt. Please. There are people who have been into debt of billions of dollars and God brought them out. Find rest. Can I tell you, for anyone who is owing here, business is not what you use to solve debt. Prophecy. Go and read your Bible. Every time you are in debt, let me save you trouble. It's not doing another business that will bring you out. It is the power of prophecy. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you do what you do. We need a more. Hallelujah. At the count of three, we are going to pray. In fact, please, my people, hold your hands. Let me start with you people. This is my dear leaders. Look at me. In the name of Jesus, may this power to prosper come on you. Take that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I release you to strange dimensions of prosperity and increase that people will arise and begin to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, in the name of Jesus, be shifted to a new level, mysterious dimensions of kingdom wealth, even by the power of God. Now I decree and declare, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Please bring those under the anointing. Some of you come from families where nobody has risen. My God is about to lift you. Are you ready now? Father, may this anointing, this man to come upon your people. Please bring them out. At the count of three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Take that grace now. Parosh Ketekata. Take that grace now. Bring them out, please. Take that grace now. I lift you by prophecy. From where you are, I shift you to a new season. Please help us, my God. Please, whether you're an usher or not, just help the ushers. We have to hurry up now. Someone's life is changing. I don't care what financial situation. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, such as I have, give I unto you. Step into a new season of prosperity. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, you are changing my life, changing my story. Please bring them out very quickly. Let's hurry up. If you can, as many as you can. If you can't bring them out, that's all right. But we have to hurry up. Someone pray. Don't wait till you fall under the anointing. 
open your mouth and begin to pray a renaissance of financial possibilities from your lowly estate my God is lifting you hallelujah where's Jimmy please arrange for him to come and sing that song the lifter of men just the chorus David you help whether it's a guitar or whatever if the keyboardist cannot play let someone help him very quickly please please bring them out quickly them out my god something is breaking out here outside inside those following from any nation the power of god to lift and to prosper is resting upon you Hear me hear me some of you by reason of this anointing I'm seeing at least 13 people at least 13 people at least 13 people your destiny is not even in this country this is what I'm seeing as God is showing me right now that anointing is going to come upon you don't ask me how it will happen Parante Shekete Balata I relocate you now by prophecy go to your place of prophecy Go to your place of destiny. I pick you a bakato scatter from where you are. The land where you must prosper. May my God take you there now. May my God take you there now. and whichever region where your prosperity is tied I shift you by prophecy go to that region now I release you let the limitations leave you now can I tell you this it is a dangerous thing to be in a place and there are people who are watching me you are outside this nation, but your destiny is in this nation. You are roaming around across the globe and finding out that even when you go to a place of plenty, there is no peace because you must be in your assigned place. I relocate you back to your place of assignment. Can I tell you this? Hear me. Hear me. All through my time of ministry I'd been in Zaria I'd become so emotionally connected there but I knew when the season was done for my assignment there it was a very difficult thing but I knew that if I do not move where God is moving as far as my assignment is concerned some of you this is the simple key you came to receive you can be roaming about there are some of you want to travel abroad is not in the blueprint of your destiny you may visit and come back but just because you hear that people are roaming around there are still people suffering in every nation don't just emotionally enter the plane and go and die my life will soon reveal you are the lifter of men lifter of men 
For those who are in any kind of financial trouble what's the power of prophecy bring you out of any financial situation hear me there are people some of you are owing some of you made careless business decisions and as it is right now it is only the god of heaven who can lift you i prayed for your spiritual life and i'll pray again but this night we want to deal with these things some of you are under corporate debt you may not be the individual in trouble, but you are under corporate debt. Your organization is owing all kinds to the millions and billions. God can help men. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by this anointing, anyone here who is in any kind of debt or financial situation, personally corporately ministries that are owing and are in trouble businesses that are owing and are in trouble individuals that are owing and are in trouble in the name of jesus christ come out of that debt now come out of that debt now by the ministry of destiny help us come out of that debt now hallelujah there are spirits that have moved from family to family ensuring everybody remains poor a family of everyone educated nobody working everyone educated nobody the highest salary may be 20,000 yes we are grateful but that cannot be enough now I want to pray fire will come upon you god is going to set you free because there are many hear me your salvation tonight is not just for you alone it's for your family members there are many of you i decree and declare any family here under a spiritual yoke maybe something happened in time past and a cause or a pronouncement was made over your family that keeps recycling poverty and financial struggles right now at the count of three please bring them under the anointing as you shout Jesus that altar will catch fire now please bring them out are you ready one two three shout Jesus I break financial yokes please bring them out I break financial yokes every spirit recycling patterns of poverty every spirit whether you are an usher or not please help those under the anointing Every spirit outside, inside, following online, responsible for lack and poverty and want, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the blood of the eternal covenant, we set you free tonight. 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 You free tonight. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. I release myself from every embargo someone pray I decree and declare a prophetic release every embargo every yoke it tied down my father it tied down my grandfather it tied down wicked people I am a righteous man in Christ and I decree and declare that by the blood of the eternal covenant I appropriate my healing and my deliverance one more minute you are praying i break free from this embargo i break free from this embargo i break free from this embargo i break free financial embargo i cost you hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Please look up. By the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of meeting and learning from extremely wealthy people. Extremely wealthy people. I am not in ignorance. I submit to you by the privilege of God's grace as to the financial principles and the systems that make for the blessing. This prayer and this miracle service is by no means excusing your, your fortitude to comply with financial principles that bless you. But let me tell you something and let me teach you something. There are only two ways financial resources will enter your life. Only two ways. Number one, value that is exchanged. Number two, favor. That is it. There is no other way financial resources will enter your pocket. Your value packaged and turned into products and services garnished with excellence and served to a, consu a targeted consumer base. That's what you call business. That is one dimension. But then the other is called favor. I want to show you how God restored Job. Job 42 verse 10. My life will soon reveal you are the lifter of men the lifter of men i will hold on through the storm this is for someone i will hold on through the rain my life will soon reveal you are the lifter of men Lifter up. Sing it one more time as a prophecy that I will hold on to the storm. Ah. I will hold on to the rain. My life will soon reveal you are the lifter of man. The lifter of man. Can I tell you this? There is no one here under the sound of my voice or will there ever be whose situation is worse than that of Job. Let me show you what God can do. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. Thank God for that, but we want to know how it happened. Are you ready? Next verse. Verse 11. <laughs> Read with me if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you seeing how God restored him? Number one, then came to him all his brethren. Every next level and finances you are trusting God for is in the hands of men. Until the men come, you cannot get what is in their hands. It says, then there came unto him. Where were they when he was crying? The Bible says God turn. So how does God turn? He places something upon your life that will start compelling people to start coming. There came unto him his brethren and all his sisters and they that had been of his acquaintance before. They were the ones that made him prosper before. That means how did poverty come to his life? Something was taken away from him and everybody left physically. How did God restore it? Something came. I'm, I'm showing you because it's something is about to come on you now. Please read it. Are you ready? One, two, read. Then came there unto him all his brethren, uh -huh, and all his sisters, and they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him, and comforted him over all the evil, that the Lord had brought upon him. Now here's the secret. Read. And every man. How many men? There is something that comes on you. That makes every man bless you. Not just those who do business with you. Every man. Every man. Read on please. One to go. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And everyone an earring of gold. Can I tell you this? Some of you have gone through serious financial hardship. God organized this miracle service to bring financial healing, to bring financial deliverance. And I'm showing you how it happened because we are going to pray now. 
I've taught you the ministry of destiny helpers. These are men anointed, commissioned by God to pay attention to your destiny. Not everyone is a destroyer. There are people who can enter your life like they entered the life of that my gentleman and turn his life around. Who would have told him that a year before or two years before, there were people in that football field before he came. It is what is on you that controls what is around you. Every man gave him a piece of money. Every man gave him a piece of money. And everyone an earring of gold. Father, who have you anointed in this season to hold my hands and move me to the next financial level? I declare, place the grace upon my life that will bring them to my destiny. Open your mouth and pray. Place that grace. This is a miracle service. Make sure you are praying. Place that grace upon my life, oh God, that will compel the helpers of my destiny to attend to me. Place that grace upon my life. Forget about where you have been. Pray. Please pray. I will hold on to the storm. I will hold on to your word. My story is about to change. You are the lifter of men, the lifter of men. Lord, I will hold on to the storm. I will hold on to your word My life will soon reveal You are the lifter of men Hear me, believers, in the name of Jesus Please listen to me I submit to you by God That there are more than enough people in any city to be used by God to lift you nobody will come and lift you on their own I've told you this there is the power that rests upon your head thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters please place your hand on your head Just place your hand on your head father this is a miracle service where you are sorting people financially once and for all my god and my king upon every head right here inside all the overflows outside i am praying Paragosia. lord the grace that must rest upon them that will compel the helpers of destiny to gravitate towards them in the name of Jesus may that anointing rest upon you now may that anointing rest upon you now in the name of Jesus hallelujah please put down your hands who is Christy I'm hearing the name Christy my assignment tonight is to deal with the issues. Christy, who is that? Where are you coming from? I want to pray for you. I presume there may be many Christies, but your life is about to change. And in case I'm prophesying to people, you open your heart and receive. What God says to one, he says to all. Are we together? 
I don't mean to embarrass you, but please hear me. There's a prophetic word. I won't ask the person to come out for social reasons. There is a lady here. A man kept you in a house. Lost. Hold on now. Let me finish the prophecy. You don't know what I'm about to say. Just hold on. Let's be patient and let prophecy finish before so that you don't answer yes to something that a man kept you in a house. Listen to me. That man is married with his wife but he kept you in a house somewhere you are in, in a relationship with the man and he kept you in a house somewhere i want you to know that that man is going to destroy you he has lied to you and made you believe that if he does not help you where will you get help i'm advising you in this miracle service in the name of jesus and with every sense of responsibility i know it is not easy it's easy to tell people you are working in this and that you must be ready to help people when you want them to make that decision but let me tell you whoever that person is i'm speaking to you by the spirit i want you to pack out of that place because with what i'm seeing that man did not just keep you there there is something occultic that he's doing there you hear what i'm saying i'm speaking to you by the spirit of god back out of there he may be giving you 10 naira but he's taking the glory of what two million from you and we have to be careful as believers sometimes you know why it is important to empower believers like this because if we don't empower believers when people are desperate they will do anything for money they will come to church and remove the 10 percent and drop it but they know where they got it from so it's not enough to just criticize people and say you are this you are following men you are following women you are following whatever no 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 we have to empower people first then we'll tell them this is how it is done in the kingdom there are many parents today who are enjoying a lot of financial blessings from their children and dancing and they do not know the dirty and demonic things their children are doing to bring money and it's easy to insult them like we always like doing in church when we hear of people's situations we are not rational to sit down and think and approach it from a heart of love God brought you people out here by his spirit. I want to pray for you. Madam, your suffering has come to an end this night. Please leave her. Careful, careful, so you don't injure her. I know what I just saw. I want to pray for her. Guy, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. You see, let me tell you something, my dear people. For as long as God brought you here this night, I assure you by God that the power that will stop you from receiving your testimony is not in existence. I'm looking at this woman in a vision and I'm seeing a woman suffering bad luck anybody that says he will bless this woman something must happen to them and they will neglect them if there is anybody like that people keep making promises tomorrow they will say next week they will say whatever is stopping them from reaching out to you I cause it to his root in the name of Jesus I cause it to his root in the name of Jesus hallelujah please don't 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 I, I don't want you to feel offended the, may God bless you madam I want to pray for you I'm seeing a woman you are a widow oh dear this woman has suffered oh this woman you are a widow and if I don't pray for you it's nothing at all is coming from anyone it's as if you don't have children it's as if nothing is happening you are you are quite an aged woman i don't know who that person is the lord is asking me to call that person and let me pray for that person you are a woman an elderly woman you are a widow but honestly as it is sincerely that you love god sincerely but absolutely nothing is happening this woman i'm seeing i know you came out but i'm seeing this woman at the overflow outside the overflow outside the overflow outside i'm not just praying for every widow of course i will pray for you if you come out but the particular person i want to pray for you are outside father you are the god that can open every door there is no mystery as to how finances come it is not magic it will always happen through men the bible says good measure 
pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give. Shall men give. The Lord called that name Christy and I want to pray for you. For some of you, you are standing as altars over your family because God wants to wipe the tears of your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power of God will come on you right now and believe me, the only thing that will bring you upstage here after this prayer is your testimony. Therefore, I stretch my hands right now. Every embargo up over your finances, an anointing is coming on you right now. Release them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Release them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Release them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Release them now in the name of Jesus. I open this door in the spirit and I declare walk into your high places in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family here. You are owing medical bills. You are owing, as I'm speaking now, you are owing medical bills even to the millions. You are owing medical bills. I don't know who that person is, whether you are watching online or you are here. It's like there's somebody. Let me tell you this. I'm going to pray for the sick shortly. Do you know that many manifestations of sickness is actually an attack on your finances? It's not about the sickness because there is a relationship between your health and your wealth. The sicker you are, the more your finances will tell to. So when Satan wants to attack your finances, one of the ways he does is to plant a mysterious sickness. It will not go up. It will not go down. It will remain there and keep eating finances. If there is anything I know that can destroy finances overnight, is health. No matter how wealthy you think you are, pray that you are not plagued. Or somebody around you plagued. There are people who spend as much as a million naira every week to be alive. If you have saved, even if it's hundred million, in how long we would have depleted everything? People have had to sell their houses because of finances. People have had to sell everything they spent their life building. Hear me. God is able to lift you from that yoke. I will be praying for, we are not going to take testimonies. That our time is gone. We may not take testimonies of people to pray tonight. I want to deal because we've not even gotten to greatness. I must spend the next 15 minutes and flog this thing out. It must step over your life. Honor and greatness. We are dealing with finances. For those of you who are here, the, 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 the wither that came, now, let me tell you this. Do you know, any day you see any widow or someone who is genuinely bereaved and incapacitated, even if it is 10 naira you can give them, it is a blessing unto God. You see that? Remember the widow at Nain? She had lost all the men in her life. Her husband, a symbol of her strength and defense, had gone. And now her child who represented her future was also gone when jesus saw her condition he said no we can't leave you this way and he brought up the child nobody prays to lose anyone but if and when it happens it is important to stand with them and stand by them to pray god is able to help we can't promise you that every day everybody will be giving you money but we can promise you that something can be placed upon your life that will insist and ensure that you are not left without help let me pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ my dear look at me you're a widow you are standing for who mom. your mom where is she don't cry Jesus is able to help you you see let me tell you this you can't comfort people who mourn when your hand is empty I hope you know that because after you pray for them and do whatever you do some of them will stand and they're expecting that even if it's 10 naira you put something in their pocket and it's easy for us to make a lot of noise in church and talk and say this and that and that god will do it you must reject poverty in your life there's no reason why you should remain the way you are not after this miracle service 
Father, I pray for these ones. You are the only one who knows how it feels, oh God. But in the name of Jesus, by your spirit, you call them out to change their lives. And I pray right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Turn their lives around release that grace upon them your physical husbands may have gone but may God become that husband for you and ensure that your needs are supplied to the latter in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the hand of God rests upon your life I don't know but I just feel in my heart to say this and I say it respectfully anyone here who is a widow or who has lost a loved one and there are people who are troubling you in the name of jesus christ we agree right now may the troublers of your destiny go now now you see anybody who troubles a woman who does not have strength on her own under normal circumstances must be a wicked person Don't cry. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying again. Anyone who is troubling you, maybe something you labored with your husband to get, and now just because he's gone, people are bullying you and bringing all kinds of trouble. I stand by the apostolic and the prophetic. I decree and declare, may your troublers depart from you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Christ from the dead I use this once in front to pray for every other person and I decree in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God that anyone who is troubling any widow here I will not let her have peace except otherwise but I pray that if the fault is not from them may God show them mercy immediately In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I pray that every man destined and appointed by God to hold your hands no matter who and what you have lost especially your husbands I pray for you may God raise genuine people with no strings attached who will hold your hands and see that you don't cry again in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let's celebrate them as they go god bless you you will return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus are you ready for the next prayer to be great means to live where you are and go to the next level of your life to be great means to rise to a point where you can also be a blessing. You can't always be the one looking up. You need to rise to a point where you can look down and reach to others. Father, whatever it takes for my greatness, release it upon me. Someone lift your voice and pray. Don't be tired. Tonight is a good bargain. Tonight is a good bargain by the Spirit. Go ahead and pray. Lord, whatever it takes, finance, influence, relationships, results opportunities release it upon my life 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 hallelujah hallelujah please look up god is able to make people great from where they are to the next level genesis 26 13. give us new king james version please if you can nkjv read with me ready one to read 
and the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous verse 14 hmm. for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants so the philistines envied him next verse 15 hold on hold on hold on go back to king james now i want to show you something because there is a name god is about to call someone for all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of abraham his father so the man had struggles the bible takes out time to tell you he did not just become very great like that there were struggles they dug a well the philistines had stopped them and filled it with the earth 16. and abimelech said unto isaac he said go from us for thou art much mightier than we when you read the verses after for the sake of time it will tell you that he dug a well and they covered it he named it he dug a well they covered it and the third one they left him and he called it rehoboth he says for god has given me my own space my own space my own space i want to pray for you the grace for greatness is a real grace read your bible look at abraham read your bible look at sarah read your bible look at esther read your bible joshua gideon ordinary people you can start from where you are but you should not remain there you must rise for the bible declares that the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day what is greatness to be elevated to a position in life and destiny where you enjoy the blessings of productivity the blessings of influence and now you can reach down to people and also be a blessing to them in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed if that happens to you that is the epitome of greatness god wants to set us free from this life of always hoping that someone will rise and help you it is in your destiny to rise too i want to speak over your life do you believe in the power of prophecy When God makes you very great, listen to me, there are many quarrels and there are many issues that are unnecessary. Can I tell you? when joseph became great it was easy to forgive his brothers there are many family problems there are many extended age-long problems that become unnecessary when you become great if they had come to meet a struggling jacob uh, uh, joseph in egypt he would tell them you are wicked and evil people can i tell you many hurt and pain you are carrying in your heart is because you have not been consoled by greatness there is a way god lifts you it becomes unnecessary to discuss the past again did you hear what i said one of the ways god heals you from the past is to make you higher than that realm by far so that the issue of money of 1995 the issue of insulting you of two it, it just becomes great people have little worries because god has so consoled them in the name of jesus big gifts is that true he carried gifts because you didn't come to see a prophet empty-handed he carried gifts and he took to elisha elisha rejected the gift and just healed him and gehazi unfortunately out of a life of compromise and dishonesty got into trouble 
the Bible never shows us the gift he took to the slave girl. I see the gift you took to the prophet who helped you. But where is the gift of the slave girl whose persuasion was the one why you were healed? There are many, many, many people here. You are the one that even brought so many people to Koinonia here. Some of them have testified, but where is yours? That book of remembrance must be open. Now hear me. Please receive this very prayer. The Bible says, Mordecai heard a few people who were conspiring because his assignment was to be a watcher at the gate. And he found out that there were people who were plotting to kill the king. To kill a king that controls 127 provinces, you must be wicked people. And he revealed that plot and the people were hung in the gallows and it was documented but he was not rewarded and the Bible says when his season had come that night just like this night let me say it again that night just like this night the king could not sleep and the king said bring me the Chronicles and they opened it where the archives of people who did good you know my bible says withhold not good from them that it is due when it is within your power do not tell them go and come tomorrow when you can do it now it was within the power of the king to honor mordecai but there had to be a spirit sponsored by the man Haman. but that night when he opened the chronicles he said read it for me and he found there the good works of Mordecai let me speak to someone even if it was 10 years ago it was written did you hear what I said even if it was 10 years ago you helped for every time you help someone know Jesus for every time you help someone find salvation you help someone maybe get a job it was written and under a certain condition the book can be opened and he said what has been done to this man they said nothing he said who is in the chamber her man was there and they called him he said Haman what shall I do to a man whom my heart delights to honor and foolish Haman thought it was him so he decided to describe an elaborate system of honor that the king would take his robe and put it on such a man and he will ride upon the king's horse all through the cities and somebody will be escorting him and shouting bow the knee he said this is what should be done to the man that the king has honor he said quickly make sure none of these words fail go and do the same to mordecai i want to declare to somebody while you are in church here may god open the book and cause people to start discussing how to lift you let me say it again while you are in the house of god here may somebody somewhere in abuja in lagos in london in u.s in the name of Jesus Christ, may they wake up from sleep. God will wake them and seize their sleep and open up the file of your kindness and remind them and insist that you are blessed. I prophesy this in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Something very interesting happened not too long ago. A man of God called me and he said, Apostle, you came over to our church to preach. This was sometime last year. And he said, um, just to let you know that since that time, we have been putting some seeds together. Months after you had come and gone, there were people who said the Lord instructed them that they sow into your life. And we had been collating those seeds. And he said, man of God, we're joking with him. He said, I'm surprised. Can you imagine this? That people will keep coming with seeds and I told him, I was going to tell him, okay, God bless you, just take the seed. He said, no, whatever grace that made these people months after you had left our church, I am the pastor in this church, oh, you see. A similar thing had happened to another pastor, a great friend of mine that I went to preach for. Somebody now called him and said, please, do you have Apostle's account number? The person said, what for? He said, I want to bless him and the only person I can remember is you. And he called me and we're joking. He said, how can a man call me? I'm a man of God too and be asking me of another man's account number and i sent it to him and he made a transfer as if i'm not there and we were just joking and laughing very good man 
but I thought about it. It's terrible for blessings to pass through you to others and yet nothing stops for you. Every time people want to bless others, you are the middleman. You are the one who connects people, who will now connect to your own. In the name of Jesus, yours will not pass you by. In the name of Jesus, yours will not pass you by. Your job will not pass you by. Your increase will not pass you by. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Let me bring a word of comfort for some of you. Can I tell you, the kindness you have been showing people has been building a house that you don't know of. So that when it is time, they will just bring you the key to a house that is already built. I'm saying this like a joke, but you'll be surprised. And you will ask yourself, when did I build this? And God will say, for every kindness, for every act of love, for every prayer, for every intercession, you were adding one block upon another. Let me prophesy to you again. There are things that because you have made happen for others, you will not struggle over to happen in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now place your hand if you are trusting God for healing. I'll just speak over your life. And then if you are yet to submit the prayer request, let's do it fast. Those who are yet to submit the prayer request, please ushers inside, outside, station it very quickly. Let's, let's redeem the time. I'm going to speak over your life. Tonight's service is dedicated to our finances and increase as God revealed. But I'm still going to minister. I know that there are people who came with all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. The Bible says, and as he taught, the power of God was present to heal. Place your hand on your chest or wherever you are trusting God for. And I'm going to pray for you. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give a praise to Him alone. He who was and lives and lives to come, I will sing before His throne forever. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare every spirit of infirmity, I command by the power that raised Christ from the dead, it leaves your body now. Yeah. By the blood that was shed on Calvary's tree and by the eternal sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now, let the power of resurrection touch your body. The power of God is touching you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Back pain, be healed in Jesus' name. Headaches, be healed in Jesus' name. Please help them. Blindness, be healed in Jesus' name. Growth in any part of your body, dissolve now in Jesus' name. Ear conditions, be healed in Jesus' name. Cardiovascular conditions be healed in Jesus' name. Arthritis of all sorts be healed in Jesus' name. Peptic ulcer be healed in Jesus' name. Heart conditions be healed in Jesus' name. HIV be healed in Jesus' name. Cancers be healed in Jesus' name. Diabetes, be healed in Jesus' name. Respiratory conditions, be healed in the name of Jesus. Uni urinary conditions, be healed in Jesus' name. Bone conditions, be healed in Jesus' name. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart 
that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.